12-sided stories is for mature audiences and often deals with topics that may be difficult for some listeners. Discretion is advised. Brave the dark woods of folk horror with us in this Vason actual play, The Hidden North. Remember, 12-sided stories are always story-heavy, rules-light, and full of fright. Hello, and welcome to The Hidden North, episode number two. I am Wes Otis, and I am here with some amazing players. Let's start with Saint. Hello, I'm Saint, or Saint Spider, and I am playing Sieve Kask. She's revealed herself to be a little cowardly. That just naturally occurred, and she is still searching for just a drop of courage from behind Hildegard, and that's what's happening. Hello, everybody. My name is Candace, they, she pronouns, and I am playing Hildegard Brunson, uh, also they, she pronouns, the doctor who is not searching for courage, uh, is instead searching for a way to be less resentful that they are stuck in the forest without a cute girl writing them poetry, which is what she thought was going to happen. Hey, I'm Michelle, and I am playing Greta Nielsen, and she's our academic, so she's more bookish than brawlish, and she's, uh, you know, getting a little freaked out by some of the stuff she's seen, but we'll have to figure that out as we go, I guess. Hello, everyone. I'm Piper. I use they, them pronouns, and today I'm playing Elizabeth Purse, who uses she, they pronouns. Elizabeth is our writer and a little bit too curious for their own good. And hopefully she is not like a cat. So we'll see how it goes. Enjoying the show? Then take a moment to join our Patreon. Support the podcast and get early access to episodes and bonus content. Head to 12 Sided Stories Patreon today. All right. This is a great place for a recap. In our first episode, our group found themselves in a large, dark forest with huge pine trees and not a lot of light. There were three places that they could go, three paths. One went to a cabin with a red glow, one went to a oak tree, and the third went to a small outcropping of rocks with a small stream to a pool. They all decided to pick the cabin, and they went up and found that there was a woman living inside that seemed to be aware of them after one of them failed, Piper failed, the stealth roll but didn't seem to do much, just went back and was feeding her baby. And they all met in the back of the cabin. The cabin door slowly opened up very creepily. They looked in and saw that there were scratch marks on the floor and maybe a few fingernails and said, nope, we're not going in there, not going to do it, not going to happen. Then Steve saw the chicken coop, became interested, and went over to the chicken coop, found a large chicken, that was on three eggs. Looked like the eggs had been in there for a little bit. And she tried to pick up the chicken and unfortunately it went away quickly. It it freaked out and ran into the woods. So she then just picked up the chicken eggs and all of them decided, you know, we're gonna try the brook. We're gonna go over to the water. So when they got there, they found a young woman who is obviously Elizabeth, who is writing down notes. All of these different fairies dancing, small elven creatures, and reacting to music that this strange creature at the top of the brook is playing on a fiddle, but there's no sound at all. Couldn't hear anything. Felt like a really big tease probably to Elizabeth is gonna be my guess. Elizabeth went over to look over the shoulder of her past self, saw the notes, complete song that she'd been searching for, and everything faded into nothingness. They found themselves standing in a small clearing with the woods all around them and the path leading out back to either the cabin or the oak. And that's where we're picking up, right at that point where the entire area had dissolved away. At your feet, Elizabeth, is one old piece of paper just looks like it's part of your old journal. 
Elizabeth will immediately snatch that up into her hands and they'll take a look at it. You remember faintly that the song had three parts, an intro, and it went into a chorus-like sound, and then it had its big finale. This is the chorus. You had part of the intro, so you found a second part. Elizabeth immediately pushes away pretty much all other thoughts. They are just entranced with this, trying to remember every piece, just constantly going over it in case when they come back, when they find out where they are, if this is some sort of dream state, that she can remember what's here. Okay. What do all of you want to do at this point? The path leads back to the oak in the cabin, that this place has ceased to be. It is now just a empty area with the sounds of the woods almost clawing at you to come into them. Is the other path still around for the tree? The path to the tree and the path to the cabin are both open for you. You can see the path. I think that's probably the direction uh, Hilda would kind of point her jaw. She's still pouting and and angry. (laughs) The important question, do we still have the eggs? One of the eggs was put on the ground. Right. If I remember correctly, that one is still there. And you notice that a little crack in it has appeared. Steve's still kind of looking around and really, really dislikes how gross fairies are. So she's making sure there's not any on her, on her ankles, or in shaking her clothes, her big shirt out and all that stuff. So, no, you don't find any other on you. They're gone. <sighs> I guess that was not real. Thank the spirits. And Steve goes up and delicately picks up the egg. It's the only thing she has, and now she's a bit attached to them. Eggs are kind of precious in general for all sorts of things, so she figures this might be useful. Is there a chip from the outside or from the inside? From the inside. Ah, and as I'm holding it, do I feel anything interesting? Is it warm, perhaps? It's a little warm, and you notice that something is pushing at the top of the egg and trying to push its way through the outer shell. I'm very delicately now is kind of... I'm rotating it a bit. How does the shell feel? Like, is it soft like a snake egg? Yeah, it's strange. It feels like a chicken's egg, but there's something inside of it that makes you feel uncomfortable. Huh. Well, uh, Steve starts to hold it a little further from her body. You notice that something grabs onto the side of the crack and pushes out, and it's a, it looks like a small hand, like a baby hand pushing out with strange, silvery, black, oily skin. Oh, she puts it down on the ground again. Actually, can I get a fear check first? Oh, that's fair. That was a genuine uh, grunt of discomfort. Okay, let's see. (laughs) Yeah, oh, one fell on the ground, so that doesn't count. Ooh, I got one six somehow. All right, so you don't freak out, but how you react is how your character reacts, however you want to do it. I put it on the ground, gently, and uh, uh, Greta, Greta, I believe we've accidentally cursed this egg. Um, there's a hand, there's a little, there's something coming out. If fairies touched it, I don't want it anymore. I'm going to keep the pure ones. I don't know what we do, what, what should we do with this? Uh, uh... <laughs> You start hearing the very, very high-pitched cry come from the egg as it slowly starts to crack open. No, we walk away from this. We walk away from this. Okay. Uh, Yeah. Oh, yeah. Perhaps, yeah, perhaps it'll disappear, just like everything else. Hey, guys, do you want to check out the tree? Uh... I'm just kind of just moving, just moving away from it. I have uh, no Elizabeth plan. and uh, Hildegard, what is your response to all this? When Hildegard jutted their chin out to gesture towards the path and saw Siv pick the egg up, they were just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Started walking towards the tree path. All right, cool. Yeah. Elizabeth? Elizabeth will pick up their hat. They were not paying attention at all and say, uh, all right, what, what? Ah. Uh. Okay, let's let's go. Yeah. Greta? No, we walk very quickly away from this. Let's go. All right. Just running. <laughs> Power walking. <laughs> <laughs> you get to the oak tree 
And you realize once you get up to the top, there's this hill that goes up to the oak tree. And there is a perfect circle of moonlight that is illuminating this perfect circle of a clearing with the oak tree at the very top. There are 12 stones that are in a circle around the clearing. In the center is a black glossy stone that looks volcanic. At one o'clock, two o'clock, three and four are skeletons. At five, six, seven and eight are decomposing bodies. And then at the next four, there are no remains there at all. You can feel the woods just outside watching what you're doing. And you can hear on the wind someone or something saying, Finish the circle. Are the bodies laying down or standing up? They're laying down. Do you want to investigate them further? May I, from a, of course, safe and solid distance, actually use inspiration to see if this is a vason related thing that we've encountered before? Like, is that a way to use inspiration? You wouldn't need to make a roll. I'll let you know, you do not remember this at all. Okay. Even, I mean, being the academic, there's nothing I might have read somewhere. You do know that fairies definitely use or, or play around with circles of stones, natural places that are kind of occult havens. This definitely has a feel of a fairy circle, but it looks like a clock. It straight up looks like a clock. And then the oak at the other end is dead and there's something watching you, but you can't tell what it is. It's too far in the darkness. Hildegard, seeing all these bodies, feels immediately kind of at home. And very brusquely, they're kind of built like a big refrigerator. They sort of just brusquely stride over. Before walking into the fairy circle, they try to like look around. They try to see if there's any trap before going inside of it. Their intention is to avoid going inside of it. If they can go around the outside of this and check the state of decay on all of these bodies, see how they died with their medicine. Okay, Candace, give me a medical roll. But Steve, is there anything else you were going to do? Steve is a little distracted by how Cavalier Hildegard is going just straight towards the bodies, but it makes kind of sense. Hey, um, can you see, like, can you can you tell if, if that's like natural decay or anything like that? That's what I need to check. I, I don't know how long they've been here. I don't know how they died. It doesn't, there's nothing really coming to me just straight off the bat. I have an idea. What if the four of us circle around the clock three times clockwise? Do we get to that? Yeah, yeah, that might work. Well, things in threes, things in circles. It's a clock. It might help us get out. See if things move. Mm hmm. That's a good idea. Right. Okay. I'm kind of glancing at the tree. When I'm looking over there, besides just the feeling of eyes, is there any movement or any. There's definitely a very tall presence standing next to the tree. You can see the moonlit outline of a creature. It's very tall, lanky, with long arms and bony wings, just watching you. Steve points very, just matter-of-factly. Does anyone recognize what that could be? Do I? Can I roll? You can roll. I got a six. Okay. Let me see what get, Michelle gets real quick. No sixes. No sixes, so nope. Yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Do you want to try, Elizabeth? Yes, please. What would this be again? This would be your investigation. Investigation. Okay. With logic or mm -hmm. probably logic. No sixes. No luck? Nope. Okay. So, yeah, nobody knows what it is. Let me jump to Candace real quick and do the medicine thing. It doesn't seem to be moving. It just, like the woman in the cabin doesn't seem to be reacting to you at all. Hildegard, you start looking at all the bodies. The first three are fully skeletal, no real clothing or anything else. You notice that they all have square holes on the side of their head where someone has hit them hard with some implement. You then look at the next three bodies and you realize 
that they have the same clothes as you and they're about the same height as each of you. But they're decayed to the point that you can just barely make out their faces. Hildegard stands up rapidly and kind of falters for a second. Can I get a fear roll, please? And I need you to do two successes for this. Fear is my logic, I believe. Yeah, I think your best is logic. And then I get plus two because I'm in the presence of dead or decayed bodies. Yeah, and then you get a plus three for all your friends. That's lots of dice. It is. Two sixes. You're not freaking out. You're not terrorized, but you're definitely concerned. Yeah, she staggers a little bit as she gets up. Like she takes like, instead of just rising normally, like one of her feet kind of goes back and she rests on it a little bit, backing away slowly. Sort of shakes her head and turns back to everyone else. Okay, so um, I feel as though perhaps there's no wrong answer here. Uh, we can, you know, uh, pussyfoot around and uh, we come back and do this again, I think. Or we, uh, we, we, we make the circle. I say we need to go make the circle, personally. So that's what I would do. Say we make the circle. I think that's our best option. When you say make the circle, the creature from behind the oak comes out into the light. It's, or it was, maybe human at one point. It has on a nun's habit, but its body has been deformed. It's got these large insect-like eyes with several different lenses throughout, kind of like a bee long face with the jetting out jaw. And it just points at the four missing places with a hammer with a square end on it. And it says, complete the circle. Has that been this whole time? Yeah, I was, well, you were looking at the body. We, should we, should we complete the circle? Is that? I think we should try going clockwise around the circle. Okay. Okay. Steve's just going to be staring at this creature. I don't know if you've seen, but, um, all of these bodies, it's us. So, as I said, there's no wrong answer, eh? I have a question. And I'll look towards the, the, the creature and say, are you the person that's in the cabin? Complete the circle. Do you think we should go back and give that egg to this one? Maybe it's her baby. I would love to do anything but stand where a hammer monster wants us to stand. I, me too. Rather not. But I do also have absolutely no answers. I'm going to go and get that um, egg we left. And Elizabeth is going to jog back to get the egg. So suddenly Elizabeth beats feet. And once that happens, the creature that's standing there just dissolves back into the blackness. And then you start hearing a chorus of different voices singing, complete the circle, complete, complete the circle, complete the circle, complete the circle. Complete the circle. Complete the circle. Complete the circle. You then notice Complete that there the are lots Complete and lots Complete of fairies the playing the in the top Complete of the trees Complete as they're singing this song to you. You notice flowers and stick people weave together within the branches. You hadn't noticed them before. Obviously, this is a place of great importance to them. And meanwhile, Elizabeth, you're running and you realize two things. You're alone. It's completely dark. You're running away from the cabin in the oak. But then suddenly when you get to the clearing that was there originally, you find yourself back at the cabin and you see the woman walking into the cabin and you can see she has both babies in her hands as she's going inside. The door remains open. She doesn't close it. And you just start hearing the rocking of her rocking chair and the soft, gentle humming of a song. And I think that gives Elizabeth ideas for later. But currently, Elizabeth is going to turn around and head back to the oak. Okay, at this point, I'm going to say you're all back together and the cacophony of singing around you has gotten more discordant, more disturbing. I need you all to make a fear check for me. 
Okay. Is it just a straight up logic? It's logic or empathy. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, there's dead bodies there, so the doctor gets a plus two. The rest of you get a plus three. And then we all get a plus three. You all get a plus three, yeah. Two successes for me. Three for me. Got one. Okay. I have failed. Oh, no. That's probably in character since I hate fairies. (laughs) (laughs) All right. See if you can push the roll and take a condition, or you can flee freeze, faint, or attack. Faint or attack. Okay. I guess I will freeze. Okay. So you just become as ice. You just stay still and you're freaking out with all this stuff around you. The rest of you are starting to feel nauseous. The sound is hitting nerves that you never knew you had. The creature starts to come out once Elizabeth returns and joins the choir. Finish the circle. Lay down. I look at them and I say, I don't think it can leave the circle. And I grab Siv's hand. I say, grab hands. Which is much different than grab ass. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) That's a different game altogether. That's a different game. Uh, Hildegard pulls up the rear. I just start pulling. And we're going to go around this thing clockwise. We're doing this three times. Damn it. (laughs) (laughs) And so I'm just dragging everybody. (laughs) Or dragging Siv at least. And they can be pushing. (laughs) So you do that three times. Mm -hmm. And the music dies down for just a moment. You don't hear the sound of them singing. But it doesn't seem to do anything else. And then you hear the sound of the creature say once again, Lay down. Finish the circle. I start dragging everybody around the circle again. And I start chanting, Send us back to the human world. Send us back to the human world. And I'm making them, I want them to start chanting with me. I'm giving them that look. Send us back to the human world. Send us back to the human world. Steve's just humming it. Like, <laughs> when, they, when we get to like the first empty hole, Hildegard breaks and just goes and lays down. They don't, they don't like use the hammer that's there. They just willingly lay down. Okay, the hammer's inside, the creature's holding the hammer. I see, okay. Well, that's what they do. Do you want to lay down? Yeah, I think when she lays down, she looks at the creature and she says, once the circle is complete, I imagine we wake up where we're supposed to be. Yeah? No, you die like you're supposed to die. And it starts coming towards you with the hammer. I think she, like, gets up. It swings towards you very quickly. What do you want to do? She wants to dodge and hit it back. Okay. So I'm going to let you go first. You're going to dodge first and then try to swing around and smack it, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Let me just make sure we're doing this right. Are you guys still running around the circle when all this happens, or do you stop? Well, when Hildegard lays down, I would stop. All right. My brain is thinking now, maybe if we go counterclockwise, because we're going against what they want. In folklore, there's going sunwise and going Wittershins, and Wittershins is normally bad luck. You know, like when you stir a pot, you're supposed to stir it sunwise. If you stir it counterclockwise, that's bad luck. So you have to stir it clockwise to, to counteract that. So I'm thinking, but they want us to be part of this clock. So maybe we go Wittershins. Okay. Um, makes sense. And they said the Ren Fair wouldn't be good for anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Candace. Just so you know, we're using zones. You are close, whereas everyone else is just one zone out. I got a success. Okay. You swing out of the way and you want to try to hit back, correct? Yep. All right. And that's close combat? Yeah. So you're going to use force for close combat. Everyone's still there around me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth is calling off to do something else on the other side of the circle. (laughs) What's Elizabeth doing? Elizabeth is grabbing the bones and tossing them away from the circle. Okay. That's smart. She's going to start destroying the circle, like what's around it. Not the circle itself, but what's around. Yeah. 
Yeah, you get the bones. Uh, now, do you want to do the counterclockwise with like kind of drag sieve with you? Yes. As this, okay. <laughs> so all these things are happening at once. <laughs> and Candace, what did you get for your attack? I got a six. Okay. Uh, explain how you punch this creature. When I see it swing, I try to grab its wrist and then just kind of like throw it back at it. So I don't know if the hammer goes into its skull. I imagine that's your decision as the storyteller. But either I punch it with my fist, like as I'm grabbing its wrist and like kind of forcing it back away from me, or it gets itself with the hammer. So a lot of things happen all at once because you're all doing something to disrupt this particular situation. When the bones get thrown out, the creature loses concentration on what you're doing, Hildegard, and you shove this hammer straight back into their head. Meanwhile, you notice as you're going counterclockwise, the bones and the decaying bodies start to grow mass again, like get some of their flesh back. And then the third thing that happens is once that hit happens, there's an explosion of huge ravens throughout the entire circle. And everything melts away except for the rocks and the stone in the center. The tree disappears, just kind of like the other place. But you feel a shift in the magic that's going around in this place. Something has happened, something has shifted, and the bodies aren't there, the bones have been thrown over, and they've disappeared. The decaying corpses have disappeared. And you hear the sounds of ravens flying away in a flock into the forest around you. And the only thing that's left is the road to the cabin. Okay, well, I guess that leaves... Is this again? Two down, one to go. Oh my god. Am I still frozen? No, no. Okay. That She was pulling you along. You obviously all did a ritual without realizing you were doing a ritual. Greta realized it. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet you. Uh, uh, so what do you all want to do next? Um, Steve, um, would you mind checking those eggs again if one of them's hatching? Oh, God. Okay. And so she takes them out very carefully and is like... When you reach in, you hit goo not egg, and you feel small hands grasping at your fingers. <laughs> just rip my hand out. Uh, and I'm just holding the hand like in front of my face. Oh my god! What do, what do I see? Oh. Just your hand. Maybe a little wetness from the goo from where the baby was born from the egg. Oh, uh, I... You feel it starting to crawl because you were frozen. You didn't feel them crack open. There's two of them. They start trying to crawl out of the pocket that they're in. Okay. Uh, uh, she just, see is like just trying to uh, um, flip out the inside, <laughs> inside out her pocket and kind of skip it around. Uh, Elizabeth, I think, uh, can you, can you help? Uh, and I'll just, yeah, I'll take and Elizabeth will reach into the pocket and grab one of the babies. <laughs> Yeah, the baby at this point is about the size of a squirrel. So it's not very big. You pull them out and they start to cry really loudly. What do you all want to do? I'm going to say, is this this is the one probably needs, uh, they need their mother, you know. I, I think we should probably go drop these off because if, if you know, she, she finds out what we have her babies. I, I agree. Now, just out of curiosity, the babies don't, look anything like us, do they? No. Yeah, what do they look like? Okay. Because <laughs> that would make four babies. <laughs> the baby that Elizabeth saw, which they'll let you know, a regular human baby, no difference at all. It had grown into a regular baby really quickly. They kind of had this weird silver and glossy black skin. The black kind of looks like Venom from the Marvel comic books. And they seem to be growing really rapidly. They were super small when they were first born. Um, well, I guess I'm I'm holding one. There's one still in my pocket. No, Elizabeth has the other one. Well, um, okay. Uh, so horrified, you know, within, I guess, game limits, I lift out the uh, 
the tiny child, um, by any chance, well... Yeah, no, you haven't, you haven't, this is weird. Okay, this is totally new. Okay, very gently, because it's a human-esque, I'm like, we, yeah, I guess, um, and she starts to try to, like, cover the mouth, but it's like, no, that's kind of messed up. Uh, let's go back, I guess, to the cabin? There's nowhere else to go. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Sorry, please. Um, trade her the babies. (laughs) <laughs> just holding them up. <laughs> so you you make your way back to the cabin, and at the door is the woman, and she, without saying anything, takes both the babies, goes back inside the cabin, and you hear her start to rock again. She doesn't say anything to you, nothing. Well, here's my fear. <laughs> I don't want to become food for those babies. I've got nothing to add. That's just very sound. She does have her hands full of babies. I was about to ask, does she have three teats? No, just four. She would need four. <laughs> four babies. Oh, right. She has four. She has four babies, but do, just two. Two teats. Two teats. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> She's not some kind of cow lady or anything like that. We don't don't know. I'm not sure. It could be anything. She's utterly beautiful. No. (laughs) Did you say utterly? Absolutely. No. (laughs) Don't make me get the spray bottle. (laughs) We need to think because okay, Elizabeth approaching Elizabeth shattered the first one. Us going counterclockwise shattered the second one. What would shatter this? Is there something missing? I mean, we've given the babies, so clearly that was not the answer. There's bones all over the ground, so we know that we're not safe here. Can I peek in the chicken coop, see if the chicken's back? Yep, the chicken is back. You start hearing these hideous screams. It gives you the feeling of the babies that you just gave back from the cabin as you're looking at this chicken again. Is the door still cracked open? Yeah, the door's open. Well, if we tell the chicken, or I guess show the chicken that the lady took its eggs, maybe we could send the chicken to the lady. Um, I think the chicken heard you say that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hello, chicken. It doesn't seem to be a speaking chicken. Oh, uh, chicken. <laughs> we, we really want to make sure. <laughs> we really want to, yeah, it's just a normal chicken <laughs> hanging out. Someone should grab the chicken. This, someone different, maybe this time. I say leave the chicken. Just, just, it's a chicken. Okay. <laughs> What's the screaming about then? Well, the screaming is coming from inside the cabin. Yeah. It seems like having to wait in the bread line is not a fun thing. But it doesn't sound like a baby. It doesn't sound like a baby, but it does sound like screaming. Does it sound like a, a woman screaming? No. Nope. Maybe? Nope. Okay. I'm just going to, if I can, just peek carefully through that crack in the door. Two of the children are suckling at the same time. And as you peek into the door, you notice that they've kind of dug into her breasts and are like biting into her as much as they are suckling. And slowly you notice that she's got these black, almost tendrils coming up through her veins, like as they're draining the life force from her. And she just keeps going back and forth in this rocker, singing this song and getting much older with every passing moment as you're watching. Oh, so it's it's the babies. It's the babies. Yes. Not the woman. Uh, I see. Oh. Mm. Okay, so we've visited more damage upon this poor lady, I guess. She looks like she was here voluntarily. I don't know. She looks like she's under some kind of... Hypnotized. Yes. That's how it seems to me. Yeah. Although she had the same nun... The same nun's habit that the other creature had. Suddenly, one of the babies that is attached puts its arm out because it's starting to... They're both starting to grow, but one of them is growing faster. And it just smacks the other child away and continues to feed. Can I get close to this woman and kind of see... Like, I don't want to get, like, super duper close, but, like, I want to get within speaking distance to her. Sure. And say, Madam, uh, you are a wonderful mother. So giving and selfless, it's beautiful. 
I've never seen such care. However, you need to replenish your stores so you can continue to do your job as the mother. Could you stop for one moment, take in some food? And I think I try to get her a bowl of the stew. All right. So you go over to the stew and you see that the stew is full of fairy bodies. Cool. Yep. Tildegard is in doctor mode. Yeah. So I think they see that and they just like ladle up a little cup and pop a spoon in it and head back over to the woman and try to like get her to engage. I'm a doctor, ma'am. So you scoop up some fairy parts and you feed it to the mother. I offer in a spoon, you know. Yeah, she opens her mouth and she starts to eat and chew and you see some life come back to her body as this creature is suckling and then suddenly everything starts to fade and disappear. As everything fades and disappears, there's a clear path out of the forest to a large castle, the last place you remember being. Oh, you did it! Oh, oh my goodness. Just some kindness. Thank you for your quick thinking. <laughs> of course, of course. Yes, I, you might, I have been told that I, while I am physically imposing, my bedside manner is uh, unraveled, so... All right, so do you all want to head out of the forest? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. As quickly as possible, please. <laughs> there's nothing remains, right, at all? No, no, everything okay. disappears. Is the piece of paper still on Elizabeth? The piece of paper is still on Elizabeth. Uh, okay, I'm going to take another look at that. Again, just trying to memorize as much as I can before putting it away. Because Elizabeth thinks that this thing is going to disappear. So you walk out of the forest, and it shimmers and disappears behind you as you get to the courtyard, the back courtyard of the castle. And behind you, you hear a cluck. And you turn around and look and it's the chicken following behind you just a few feet. What the cluck? Hello, Anhenchen. What do you want? Are you are you a pet? Are you a familiar? You coming with us? It just kind of follows around, pecking at dead bugs in the grass. Sorry about me trying to grab you earlier. I, I don't know if you remember that, but I was just... We were we didn't know what we were doing. Very much a chicken. Very much doesn't have long-term memory. Gotta make sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna wonder through the entire game as long as the chicken is there. Yeah. Elizabeth is gonna kind of like stop and like crouch down and extend their arms towards the chicken. It'll like come towards you a little bit and side eyes you a little bit. Isn't too sure about you for a hug yet, though. Kind of goes back to its eating. We'll, we'll work on that, yeah. That's, Greta, when you realize that there are really bright lights all around the castle and you hear the sound of something you haven't heard before. It sounds like a whooshing sound. And Hildegard, you notice a very old man sitting on the back step of the porch of the castle. And he's drinking some kind of something out of a flask. And he looks up and he sees the four of you there. And he goes, oh, damn it. I was, I was hoping it was going to work. I was hoping you were going to fix whatever. And that's where we're going to end this episode. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> I was going to say, does the man recognize the chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Do you recognize this chicken right here? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> we will pick this up next time. There is a lot of questions, I'm sure, but we will get to those. Many. Thank you all so much. Let's go ahead and find out where all you wonderful people are. Let's start with Piper. Hello, everyone. This is Piper. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Maddie Matihi. That's M-A-T-T-Y-M-A-T-E-E-H-E-E. -E -E. Uh, you can also find me on Twitch at Matihi. You'll find me every other Saturday streaming a game called What We Do in the Shallows, which is a queer pirate adventure with a number of other individuals, including our lovely Candace. It is a wonderful time, so you can check me out there and check out my socials when I rarely post if you want to see me in anything else. Thank you so much. Hello, I am Saint or Saint Spider, and uh, well, I'm uh, kind of hard to find. Sorry. You can find me on Twitter at Saint Spider TV. That's S A I N T S P I D E R TV, and I have not posted since November 2023. So there you go. But 
check me out on some of the previous 12 sided stories uh, campaigns. They are awesome. Hello, everybody. I've been Candace. You can find me at the Candace Marie on Twitter and Blue Sky at Candace Magnificent everywhere else. If you'd like to hear or see more of me, please check out my socials. I have a lot of things going on there. As Piper said, I am on the Every Other Saturday show, What We Do in the Shallows. You can hear me on Beyond the Outer, the Patreon exclusive mothership campaign right here on 12 Sided Stories, uh, Bloom and Blight, as well as the upcoming TTRPG AP and audio drama, Frequencies, and The Albright. Hey, I'm Michelle. You can find me on the socials at Michulu. That's M I C H U L H U. You can also find my music and Wes's amazing sound effects if you subscribe to the Plate Mail Games catalog through Battle Bards. And I'm Wes Otis. You can find me at Plate Mail Games and all the socials. You can find the show at 12 Side Stories, all spelled out, all one word.com on our website. You can find us on the socials at 12 Sided Stories, the number 12, then Sided Stories on all the different places. And you can join our Discord to ask us questions if you'd like. We would love to have you there. If you want to help out the show, follow us on your favorite social media. Give us a shout out. Give us a review. Or join us on Patreon and get a ton of extra stuff. Like Candace says, we have a Mothership story going right now. We have lots of back issues and stuff of shows that you can't get anywhere else but Patreon. So definitely check it out. Thank you all so much for playing. Thank you all so much for listening. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.